All right, welcome to our third and last discussion on uh, estimating with confidence. As you recall, we talked about confidence intervals, the basics around confidence intervals, and we talked about population proportion. Uh, now we're going to talk about estimating a population mean. And some of this information um, in terms of the setup for the formulas is very similar to what we've already learned, at least in the first two sections So, of uh, or the objectives for this chapter. So we're going to talk about when a standard deviation is known, one sample Z interval for a population mean. We're going to talk about choosing, using this formula to choose a sample size. We've done uh, similar work in the population proportion section. Uh, and then when a standard deviation is unknown, we'll talk about uh, T distributions. Well, we'll talk about constructing a confidence interval for the population mean around the T distribution. And then using T procedures wisely will be the last part of the discussion. Right, so one sample is the interval for population mean. Uh, we're going to draw an SRS of some given size from a population having a known, an unknown mean, excuse me, and a known standard deviation. Um, as long as the normal and independent conditions are met, a level C confidence interval for the population mean is going to be defined as a sample mean plus or minus the Z statistic times uh, the sample standard deviation which we can craft as a population standard deviation divided by the square root of the sample size. Uh, we can use the standard normal table or the TI calculator to find the uh, critical value uh, uh, or that Z value. All right, so this is, I'm going to leave this up for a second. We're going to work on and through uh, this formula. So population mean is equal to the sample mean plus or minus. This is the uh, the interval, confidence interval, plus or minus the Z uh, value divided by the population, or multiplied by the population standard deviation divided by the square root of the sample size. All right, so let's uh, take an example. We have a mystery mean value of 240.79 and a population standard deviation of 20. We have an SRS of 16. That's our count. We want to estimate the population mean with 95% confidence interval. All right, so we're going to set this up. We have our uh, sample mean of 240.79 plus or minus 1.96. So that's the Z value that we got from the table at 95% confidence interval. Uh, we have a standard deviation of 20 divided by the square root of the uh, sample size of 16. Gives us 240.79 plus or minus uh, 9.8 or 230.99 to 250.59. All right, so that's how you set this particular uh, program up. Using this formula, I have a sample mean, I have the Z value, I have my standard deviation, which is known, and then I have the sample size, which is also known, and I can create my confidence interval uh, value for the population mean. All right, so choosing a sample size. So now we're going we're gonna to solve for n using that same formula. Uh, so we're going to choose a sample size for a desired margin of error when estimating a population mean. And to determine the sample size n that will yield a level C confidence interval for a popul population mean with a specified margin of error, we're going to first get a reasonable value for the population standard deviation from a prior study. Uh, then we're going to find the critical value based on the confidence level. And then we're going to set up the expression for the margin of error to be less than or equal to uh, uh, the margin of error, and then solve for uh, n. OK. So let's take an example, or I'll give you the, uh, the setup here. So the margin of error is greater than or equal to that critical value uh, uh, times the population standard deviation divided by the square root of the sample size. All right, so using this formula then, which we extracted from this previous formula here, we're going to figure out what the sample size is going to be. Um, all right, so we're calculating the margin of error. And the first example, so researchers would like to estimate the mean cholesterol level of a particular monkey that is frequently used in lab experiments. 
they would like their estimate to be within plus or minus one milligram per deciliter. Uh, at a 95% confidence level, a previous study suggests the standard deviation is at five milligrams per deciliter. All right, so we're going to set this up uh, as 1.96 times five, the standard deviation divided by the square root of n, which is what we're trying to find is uh, less than or equal to one. So I want this to be within a uh, margin of error of one milligram per deciliter. And I got the 1.96 from the confidence level of 95%. So now I'm going to uh, divide uh, both sides by 1, and then multiply both sides by n, and then solve for n. I get 196 times 5 divided by 1 squared is less than or equal to n. I'm going to solve for that value. n is greater than or equal to 96.04. Uh, and so we need to make sure that that value uh, is if it's in terms of some quantitative value that is as an integer, then it's going to be greater than or equal to 97. If not, it's 96.04. So here it appears we're sampling monkeys, so we can't have a fraction of a monkey. So we're going to round up to uh, 97. All right, this brings us to our first homework problem. I'm going to put, put this up and then I'm going to move on. So administrators at Homestead want to estimate how much time students spend on homework during a typical week. They want to estimate the population mean at 90% confidence level with a margin of error of uh, less than 30 minutes. So this uh, apostrophe stands for a minute. Pilot study indicated that the standard deviation of time spent on homework is 154 minutes. How many students need to be surveyed? All right, so I'm going to let you copy this. And then I'm going to move on to our next section. All right, so third thing we want to know, uh, we're going to talk about t-distributions. When the standard deviation is unknown, uh, we're going to need to talk about uh, t-distribution. All right, and we're going to get into degrees of freedom, which uh, we've talked about before and we're going to review again. So we take the original formula that we had at the beginning of uh, this section. Population mean is equal to sample mean plus or minus that z statistic times uh, the standard deviation of the population divided by uh, the square root of the sample size. And then I'm going to rewrite this. And I'm, what I'm trying to do is I'm trying to solve for z. So I'm going to uh, add plus or minus z to the left-hand side, subtract u from both sides, and I end up with plus or minus z times the standard deviation divided by the square root of n is equal to uh, sample mean minus the population mean. And then I'm going to uh, add uh, the population mean to both sides. And I end up with plus or minus, uh, I'm sorry, I'm going to divide uh, the uh, population standard deviation uh, divided by the square root of the sample size uh, by both sides. And so I end up with plus or minus z is equal to sample mean minus the population mean over the population standard deviation divided by the square root of the sample size. Now, if I don't know the population standard deviation, I'm going to substitute that with the sample standard deviation here. And I'm going to end up with a t value. All right, and the t value is what we're going to focus on. The t value comes up, this t statistic comes up when I'm using the sample standard deviation instead of the population standard deviation, or when the population standard deviation is not known. All right, so <clears throat> what ends up happening is that there is greater variability when you use the sample standard deviation. That makes sense than the population standard deviation. So we need to account for this increase in variability when we're estimating the population mean. So you can see here, this is just a rough look at, if I have a z-score with a known population standard deviation versus a sample standard deviation, I'm going to end up with greater spread uh, in the values that I get for t. Um, all right, so degrees of freedom 
is something that we're going to use to qualify the t statistic. Uh, it's going to be equal to n minus 1, so the sample size minus 1. And the higher the degrees of freedom, then the meaning the bigger the sample size, the more the distribution represents the standard normal curve. All right, so as I increase my degrees of freedom, you can see that curve starts to uh, move in towards uh, the standard normal curve, or it becomes closer to, the outside becomes closer to that mean value. So going back to the look here, as the value for uh, n increases, right, then the, it makes a representation that's closer to uh, what a standard normal curve is. Okay. Uh, so let's talk about this in the context of some example. Uh, we want to find the t-statistic. So suppose we want to construct a 95% uh, confidence interval uh, with a mean value oops, uh, all right, so suppose we want to construct a 95% confidence interval for the mean uh, population mean of a normal population based on a sample size of 12. What's critical value of t should I use? Uh, all right, so let's find the t value. Uh, all right, so <clears throat> what we're going to do is uh, we're going to we have a 95% confidence interval, and we're looking at an upper tail probability in this table here. So uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to take 1 minus uh, 95 divided by 2 is 0 0.025. So I'm going to look at the top um, of this table, and I'm going to use 0 0.025. I have a sample size of 12, so my degrees of freedom is 12 minus 1 of 11. So 2.21 is going to be my t value. Uh, all right, so I'm going to move on from this. Oh, uh, so we're going to use the calculator to find this t value. And I'm going to show you how to do that. Uh, so we're going to uh, uh, get to our ti84 and I'm going to click on the second button in the VARS uh, button or second in DISTR button. I'm going to be in the screen. I'm going to use the inverse T function. Uh, and then I want an area of 0.975, right? Because I need that quarter here and then the quarter on the other side for 95% confidence interval. Uh, <clears throat> and then degrees of freedom is 11. And I'll end up with a t-value of 2.20. So this should correspond uh, to what we saw previously. This is from your book, 2.201. And uh, this is approximately, uh, this is the exact number the table gave us an approximation. Um, all right. So that's how you use a calculator to find that t-value. All right, so homework. Uh, all right, suppose we want to construct a 90% confidence interval for the mean normal population based on a sample size of 10. What critical value of t should I use? And I'm going to leave this up here for you to copy down, and then I am going to move on. Okay, so now we want to construct a confidence interval for the population mean. <clears throat> And we're going to talk about standard error of the sample mean, uh, where S sub X is a sample standard deviation. It describes how far uh, the sample mean will be from the population mean on average and repeated uh, simple random samples of size N. All right. So we're going to choose, so we're back to now our calculation here, choose an SRS of size N from a population having a known unknown mean. Uh, level C confidence interval for U is described as such. And we're going to use this interval only when the population distribution is normal or the sample size is larger than uh, or equal to 30. And we meet the criteria for an independence where N is less than or equal to 1 10th N. All right, so conditions for uh, inference uh, about a population mean. So random comes from a random sample. Normal population has a normal distribution and the sample size is large, uh, greater than uh, or equal to 30. And then independent observations 
results of the observations don't influence each other, so n has to be less than or equal to 1 tenth n. All right, so let's work on an example around this. Okay, so the manufacturer of a video uh, display must control the tension of the mesh behind the surface of the viewing screen. A random sample of 20 readings from 1,000 produced daily is taken for a given day. The sample mean is 306.32 millivolts. In a sample standard deviation, 36.21 millivolts. The manufacturer wants the mean at a 90% confidence interval. So state, plan, do, conclude. All right, so we're going to pause here. We're going to come back to an explanation of this, and I'm going to show you how to get this confidence interval on a calculator.